Hello all, thank you for joining my channel. Now I've done quite a few silly videos in the past few weeks, so I thought uh, it was time for a sciencey one. Now with the Flat Earth community, there's almost always someone who flurfs on about how gravity seems to be selective. And they come with the question along the lines of, How is it that gravity pulls stuff down but helium balloons float up? Well, this is actually a very good question if it were asked by a sensible person. But of course, when asked by a flurf, it usually isn't even a question. When someone begins to answer the question, they start suffering from their characteristic selective deafness. Now, of course, flat earthers just utter those words just to follow it up with some rambling about relative density. And yes, relative density is definitely a factor, but it is entirely meaningless without gravity. Now, today, I'm going to assume that if you are a flat earther and you are still watching this after the previous bit, then you are one of the more honest flat earthers and you are actually interested in hearing the answer to that question. So here goes. So to start off, we need to consider gravitational potential energy. Now I'm aware that flat earthers don't believe that gravity is a thing, but the purpose of this video is to show why helium balloons go up due to the force of gravity. This video is about explaining, not demonstrating or proving anything. Gravitational potential energy is the energy that's associated with the distance of an object from the center of gravity. Actually, any potential energy is associated with the position of an object in a force field relative to another reference position. Now, potential energy increases as an object is moved against a force. Now, in the case of gravity on the Earth's surface, as you lift something up, you are increasing the gravitational potential energy. The change in the gravitational potential energy is given by the product of the force and distance. So U, which is the potential energy, is equal to mgh. Now, for a longer treatment of these ideas, then go to my Basic Physics for Flat Earther series. Let's take a simple system where we have a buoyant object with density rho b and volume v. Let's just say that the object is incompressible, so these values don't change and we can keep it simple. We hold it fully submerged in some medium, let's say water, at some height h2. The medium has a density of rho m, and the object has displaced a volume of the medium equal to the volume of the object. We now push the object down to a height of h1. If the density of the object is smaller than the density of the medium, you'll notice that there is an upward force. Now, this is because the action of you pushing the object down actually forces some of the medium to be pushed up to fill the space that the object was in in the instant before. So yes, as you are pushing down the object, you are simultaneously lifting some of the medium. And this is where the force comes from. You are lifting the medium up against the force of gravity. What this then also means is that you are increasing the gravitational potential energy. It would be silly to say that gravity is not acting on an object. It absolutely is. So there is some gravitational potential energy associated with the object as well. But let's get some equations out. The total energy difference in the two states just described is the difference in potential energy between the initial state and the final state. Now, in each state, the potential energy is the sum of the potential energy of the buoyant object and the potential energy of the displaced water. We can write that out in full, and we can simplify. Now, we can collect it in terms of the density of the buoyant object and the density of the medium. And we can rearrange and we can simplify again. Now we set the difference in height as dh, so we can write this in differential form. Now force is the derivative of potential energy with respect to h, so we get this expression. But let's expand that out again. So here we see two components of the force. As indicated by the minus sign, we have a downwards force, which is proportional to the density and the volume of the buoyant object along with the acceleration due to gravity. Now, the second force is due to the density and the volume of the displaced water, along with the acceleration due to gravity. Now, this force is acting upwards. 
This tells us that the upward force acting on the object actually comes from gravity pulling the displaced volume back down. From this equation you will also notice that if the medium is less dense than the object, the force acts the other way. That is to say, if the medium is less dense than the object, the object sinks. If the medium is denser than the object, the object floats. There are some important ideas to note though. Now in this derivation, we have assumed that density and volume have remained constant. Now helium balloons expand as they go up into the atmosphere and the density decreases, but so does the air. And eventually the two forces actually start canceling out. You could demonstrate this equilibrium at sea level by filling a balloon with a helium air mixture that is just right and the balloon will just hover. Everything in a medium under the influence of gravity is subject to some buoyant force. However, humans, for example, are around 1000 times denser than the air. So this buoyant force is negligible. Now in water, this becomes an entirely different story. Now I'll finish this off with something cool because the concept applies to other forces as well. If you have a helium balloon in your car, you will notice some weird shit. When accelerating, you feel a very distinct backwards force, but you will notice that the helium balloon is going forwards. Now the same equations apply here, but rather than the directions being up and down, the directions are backwards and forwards. Now when you brake in your car, you actually see the opposite happening. Everything dense is being flung forward, but the helium balloons move backwards. So these are the mechanisms which explain why an object that is lighter than a medium tends to float away from the direction of gravity and why a denser object sinks. Now, as per usual, if you like what you have seen and you are up for some more sciencey stuff and some silly shit as well, then hit that subscribe button. Uh, liking this video and tickling my bell also tends to make me very happy.